Good morning, and welcome to this morning's service for Palm Sunday. Uh, a couple of announcements just to start us off. Here we are, wow, can you believe it? We're entering Holy Week during a pandemic. But not to worry, we are still going to make it special. We're going to highlight the experience and increase our participation with a few new additions. We're still going to make Holy Week 2020 one to remember. You see, because the moment that Jesus enters Jerusalem as king, his entire life becomes a liturgy. Everything he does reverses the fall of Adam. And you'll never believe how it all comes together. He's taking us back up the mountain, back into the garden, back up to the tree, to the eating of the fruit, to the life. So we're going to follow him day by day. We're going to have shorter services on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, just about 15 minutes that look after that. You'll see the details in your bulletin. And then on Saturday, Holy Saturday, we'll, we'll hold a vigil. So you'll need a candle for that, and we'll have a, a service that starts in the darkness uh, and leads to the resurrection. Some other announcements for you. Uh, those of you uh, trying to get the most out of the YouTube thing, uh, please, uh, we've worked out some bugs, so click subscribe on the channel there, and then click the bell beside it and select all. That will get you all the notifications of, of any new content that's coming on at any time uh, so that we don't have to be bombarding you with email. Also, there's an announcement uh, there for you about how to make an offering. Uh, there's a way to do it without having to uh, come, come in or go online. Uh, you can go, uh, that is, you can go online uh, using the Synod's website and make a donation beautiful Savior. Also, there's an announcement there for those who are in need. If you are uh, finding yourself unable to get out, you need deliveries, um, we have people that are offering to do that sort of loving service. Uh, also, if you are finding yourself in economic hardship, um, do not be afraid. Do not shy away. Your church family, had there are members who have pledged to help. So um, as things get particularly tight, uh, remember, your family is bigger than you thought. Also, uh, there is uh, an, uh, the AGM, the voters' meeting, has been announced for uh, April 19th at 1 o'clock. Uh, the work of the church needs to continue. We're going to try and facilitate that through an online meeting uh, as best as we can. So take a look at the details there in the bulletin uh, before you. It is Palm Sunday, which means... You need palm branches. If you don't have them ready, just click pause and go and make some. Craft it up or something like that. I've got mine. But then come back, because here we are. We're going to start the service. Jesus is going to enter, and we are going to receive him. Turn with me to the order of service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The next day the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing? Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing our processional.
chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas ring. A multitude of pilgrims with palms before you end. Our praise and prayer and prayer. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for Palm Sunday is taken from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous, and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak in peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. T -t Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing right on, right on in majesty. Tribes, Hosanna, cry, O Savior, meek, pursue thy road with palms and scattered garments. Strong. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs now begin, our captive death and conquered. 
ride on, ride on in majesty, the angel armies of the sky. Look down with sad and wandering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, thy last and fiercest strife is nigh. The Father on his sapphire throne awaits his own anointed Son. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in holy pomp, ride on to die. Why thou me can to mortal pain, and take, O God, thy power and reign. The epistle is from Philippians, chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus. Who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loses his life, whoever loves his life, loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. 
The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow baptized saints, fellow servants, and subjects of the one true King, Jesus Christ our Lord. If we want to understand what it would have been like that day, thousands of years ago, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem on a donkey, then we have a lot to remember. This moment in history is not simple. It didn't happen in a bubble. It isn't clean and easy like it seems in the text. No. More than any other event in all of history, this slow ride up into Jerusalem is the convergence of every force and power and influence of every structure and every story in all creation. I mean, let's be honest. God's people have a long story, a history 
so different from every other history, some of which we'll hear during the Easter Vigil on Saturday night. But it is that unique history which drives forward the legs of this donkey. All of that story is coming together in this moment. And that story is about to happen again in this Jesus in just one short week. A new king, the fulfillment of David. A new exodus, the fulfillment of Moses. A new creation, and a new Adam, and a new tree of life. All of this, and this humble man riding a donkey into Jerusalem this day. This was the moment they'd been waiting for. They knew God had a big, important goal that he would accomplish through them, that he was using them, that they were the actors in the ongoing drama of world history. They worship with this way every day with the Psalms. They knew they were the leading edge. And so they had some sturdy national aspirations, big hopes that God would restore them as a nation and a country. The God who brought order out of chaos in the beginning and who brought his enslaved people out of Egypt in the Exodus, he would do it again. This was his promise. And this was their hope and prayer. And despite it being written, they were not ready for the totality of how God would do this in Jesus. All the old songs came flooding back, and they were singing. At last, their dreams were going to come true. But Jesus wasn't singing. When he came near and saw the city, he wept over it. Yes, their dreams were coming true, but not in the way they had imagined. Jesus was not the king they expected. He wasn't like the monarchs of old who sat on their jeweled thrones, dispensing their justice and wisdom. Nor was he the great warrior king some had wanted. He didn't raise an army and ride into battle at its head. He was on a donkey. No violence, no armor, no power, no anger, no wrath. No. He was weeping. Weeping for the dream that had to die. Weeping for the sword that would pierce his disciples' hearts weeping for the kingdom that wasn't coming, as well as for the kingdom that was. The reason he wasn't what they expected was because he was the true king. They had become used to the ordinary, shabby, second-rate sort. They were looking for a builder to construct the home they thought they wanted. But here was the architect coming with a new plan that would give them everything they needed. They were looking for a singer to sing the song they had been humming for a long time. But here was the composer, bringing them a new song to which the old songs they knew would form at best the background music. He was the king, all right. But he was redefining kingship itself, forcing it to be understood in his work, his mission, and his fate. What kind of king were you expecting? If I warn you, he is just as much a challenge to us as he was to them. We want a religious leader, not a king. We want someone to save our souls, not rule our world. Or, perhaps if we do want a king, someone to take charge of our world, what we really want is someone to implement the policies that we already embrace. A rubber stamping sort of king. But a true king. One to rule over us with his own ideas. Well, we're not so sure about that. Jewish expectations aren't the only pressure system bearing down on Jerusalem. No. There are strong Gale force winds coming from the west, too, from Rome. The Romans hold social, political, and military power. They've been squashing uprisings and rebellions for decades, and they look back on the golden days of their power in the region with longing. 
They have no use for a new king in Jerusalem. And they have the clout to make sure that it doesn't happen. And so we have the perfect storm. Because God has already made his promises. There may be intense pressure among the Jews and strong gale force winds coming from the Romans, but God's word is a tempest, a hurricane, and it will happen no matter what. God has promised to return to his people. He has promised to establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, not to fulfill the national aspirations of the Jews, no, but on his own terms and for his own purposes cutting right across the social and political and religious expectations of everyone. He has even warned that his own people will reject him. But the prophets have become more and more explicit through the years. It is time for God himself to be king. The perfect storm. This is what Jesus is riding into. This is not the time to be out on the sea in a dinghy. Yet here we are, watching Jesus enter this storm on purpose. He is seizing this perfect moment, making it the culmination of his public ministry. He has spent three years announcing the kingdom of God. Three years declaring that this is God's moment, that Israel's God is king, that everything is going to change now. Because God is in charge. No. This was not a question. It was an announcement. He's been declaring it to be true already. And not just an announcement. Jesus has been doing all the things that you would expect to see if this announcement were true. Healing. Feeding. Controlling. Creation. All the things God did for his people through the entirety of that long story. But we're not ready for the beating heart of the matter. No. Nothing could prepare us for the fullness of God's plan. For Jesus is making very clear that all of these things, the announcement, the miracles, the salvation, the kingdom, these things are happening in him in his very flesh, that he is the embodiment of God's action. He is the place where all these things come together, and you will not find God anywhere but in this man, on this donkey. He is not a political king. He is not a social king. He is not even a religious king. He is the king of all. He is the king of of your being, your very existence and everything in it. This is what he rules. And you should let him, for he is humble and patient, righteous and comes to save in this incredible way. Open wide the gate of your heart that he might enter in. Lay down your coverings before him that he might reign where you are most vulnerable. Expose your sin to him. Cast it at his feet. Throw it on his shoulders as he marches to his throne cross to destroy it in his body for you. For this is the kind of king he is. This is the kind of Lord. This is how he rules. So let nothing move in you that his word doesn't start. Let your attention in every moment fall under his control. Let him order the way you think, direct the beat of your heart, design the path of your feet. For indeed, you are the actors in his great story. You are the ones he is using to accomplish his big important goal. The God who brought order out of chaos in the beginning and who brought his enslaved people out of Egypt in the Exodus, is bringing his new Israel, his church, out of this dying creation in his own son, that she may be his holy bride. And you, dear ones, are on the receiving end of this indescribable plan. 
He has done all of this for you by grace. And now he uses you to show mercy and humility and patience to a world in need. Announcing his kingdom and following him in its entirety this holy week as he goes as our king to take his throne on the cross. What kind of king were you expecting? No matter what it was, Jesus is more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise for the prayer of the church. Because we have a king who knows our every weakness and shares in them with us, one who comes to us righteous and having salvation, let us pray through him to our Heavenly Father for his dear bride, the church, and for all people in any need. For the church, that she may be defended against the assaults of Satan, that she boldly proclaim the true king who humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death for all the world, and that she be enlarged as the Holy Spirit uses that announcement to turn hearts to him in repentance and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our lives as his servants, that we be granted faithfulness in times of temptation, forgiveness when we fall, a humble love for all our brothers and sisters in Christ, and reconciliation with those from whom we are alienated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who live without faith in Christ, that the Holy Spirit call them to repentance and grant them a confident trust in the King who comes as their Savior from sin, death, and devil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for each and every person affected by the global pandemic, that the Lord would calm the anxious, protect the infected, and comfort the grieving, that he would put an end to the virus, preserve all medical personnel, and give wisdom to leaders making decisions, that he would humble us towards him, focus us on his word, and increase our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the lonely, the distressed, those afflicted in body or soul, that God would hold his Son before their eyes this holy week and show them how he will heal all wounds in him, and that he would give them patience and trust to wait on his good timing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth.
most precious peace be yours this holy week as you walk with him. Peace to you and to all your family.